Good day, Giovanna Turgul, and thank you so much for being on my podcast, 30 Minutes with Zaina, today. Hello, Zaina. It's my pleasure. Uh, today, we're going to be covering an amazing uh, topic, which is trending a lot, and which I personally love also, which is technically body language. And we're going to be covering the psychology, the methods, and how important it is today for us to personally brand ourselves, be it online or offline. And it's a very wide topic, I know, but we're going to discuss as much as we can. Uh, before we jump into the discussions, I would like to introduce you quickly. Uh, Giovanna, you are a body language specialist and a trainer. You're based in Dubai, and you aim to teach individuals uh, something called the nonverbal communication, which we're going to talk about in any format of interaction. Uh, in addition to uh, assisting people and even business individuals on becoming more successful from the way they communicate and they utilize their body language in specific with others. So if we come back to referring to body language as the nonverbal signal that we use to communicate our emotions and intentions, uh, tell us a, uh, more about how it involves the posture, how it involves the facial expressions, how it involves the hand gestures, and definitely many different uh, formats of um, uh, communication. This way we can make people understand first what is body language, and then we'll go into the details of it. Yes, thank you so much for bringing this topic. Uh -huh. I want for everybody who is listening to understand what is nonverbal communication. Yes. Every day we are sending and receiving signals from our nonverbal communication that makes 60%. So when we are focusing on the words, we are focusing only 40% of our ability. I want to make it closer to people to understand how to use 100% of their ability. Okay. And to understand what is body language, actually we have to make them into three different groups. First one is the facial expression. This is essential part of body language. Dr. Paul Ekman uh, find out that no matter your race, your age, gender, even the people who are born blind, we all have seven universal facial expression for seven universal emotions. This okay. is happiness, sadness, anger, contempt, fear, surprise, and disgust. Second group is our body proxemics. This is the space we take. Mm. Is somebody sitting broad with their open, broad shoulders, open hands, having a lot of hand gestures, or very less? Sitting, slouching in, crossing their arms, looking down. This is telling us like instrumental tool, what is their emotion, what is the information that we can gain from them? And what is the feeling they're having? And the third group is our ornaments. Which is? This is a little bit difference between the female and male body language because usually ladies, when they're nervous or anxious, they tend to play with the earring or playing with the ring. Men usually fidgeting with their watch, fixing the tie. They're playing with the pen. These are all ornaments that are telling us a lot. What is the level of nervousness and anxious? Okay. And uh, you know something funny enough, I had a, a workshop that I attended once and it was very well uh, done because they used the format of the sound of the voice and the playing with the, with the pen. Just, I felt it like, like it was like a format of hypnosis because you're just looking at the person and just the voice of that person, just playing with the pen, it was just, you know, mesmerizing. It was really lovely, you know? And exactly. exactly. Attention. It's so attention. It's taking your attention. Yes, taking your attention. that's correct. Okay, so this is body language in a nutshell. Now, we basically, us as marketeers, uh, let me talk about myself. I train a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of CEOs, and a lot of business owners, even GMs of companies, how to personally brand themselves, be it online and offline. And what I try to do always, because they are, you know, business-driven people, to have the same equal uh, ways of communicating themselves, be it offline and online. When I say offline is with people and online, be it behind a phone or behind a camera. Yet, I face a lot of issues with some of them because we have the terminology introverts and we have the terminology extroverts. And I believe there's a terminology in between that you're going to explain to us um, more about it. So tell us a bit about those categories and why do we face sometimes difficulties between introverts and ext extroverts and how do we deal with such people? Thank you so much for bringing this topic because I believe that everybody is struggling in which group they belong. 
Mm -hmm. If we have a spectrum of extroversion, on the low spectrum, we are introverts. Okay. We like time alone. We don't like to be more, too much socialized with the people. On the high level of extroversion, we have extroverts. This is the people that they like to be surrounded with other people. They like networking events. They like to try new things. But how about people who like to be around the people, but also they need the time for themselves? Hmm. This is somewhere in between. Okay. And this is what we call ambiverts. Hmm. This is not a label. This is just where they belong on the spectrum. And they belong somewhere in, somewhere in between. And I'm so happy that you brought this subject because a lot of people who are uh, leading the companies, they're uh, in media, they're CEO, not all of them are extroverts. Hmm. So what we can learn from introverts and ambiverts, what is their advantage? First of all, they are more observing. When the introvert, introverts and ambiverts. Okay. Exactly. They are more observer than the extroverts. You, okay. you can always guess who is the extrovert in the room because you see the most hand gestures. They're the lousy. They're smiling very loud. That's so me. <laughs> you can, you can all, well, then you, it, it's easily to guess who is the extrovert uh, person in the room. But how about ambiverts and introverts? When they have to lead such a serious project, when they want to be uh, also in the some uh, social level in, around their friends, they have to know to leverage their advantage. And this is that they are very good listeners. That means that they talk carefully. They mm -hmm. process everything before they talk. Mm -hmm. Second thing is that humility is the advantage of introverts because they don't put their ego in front. Why is that, you think? Because they are very good leaders, manager, and friends. They always try to listen and to understand other person. From, they are looking things from other person perspective because they have time to process the things. Okay. They don't react in the same moment. They process. They see the pro and cons, and they, they give their, uh, their awesome. final thought. Yes, but but That's uh, why but the thing is, uh, sometimes they they refer to these people as sneaky. Oh, he's not talking, or she's not talking. They're just you know looking around, or is it just really it's a personality? It's a we're it's fifty percent our personality is genetic, okay. and the worst thing that can happen to say to introverts, go out, be yourself. This is like you're asking them not to be themselves. Mm -hmm. So we have to know in which kind of environment how they will how to optimize with them okay. they need their own time so if they are in some social interaction they are usually pushed to say or to give an answer which is not processed in the time what is important for them they, okay. they haven't been given the exact time but Giovanna if for example we are training say for example introverted CEOs okay that are so ashamed of you know being on camera or being on TV or anything of this uh, sort what can we do to at least make it a bit easier for them? I know you can't change characters, you can't change people, yet uh, what, can, what are the methods that we can use? Do you have anything that we can share? Yes, this is why uh, nonverbal communication, body language is the most easiest thing for introverts because they don't have to say a word. All they have to do is to become confident. Okay. If they cannot do that from inside out, they can start from outside in. How? Because, let's say, usually introverts are, uh, there is a specific body movements that we can see in uh, alpha male and female, which we don't see in introverts. Mm -hmm. This is like alpha male and female, they will always have their broad shoulders. They, you will always see this part from the ear lobes to the, to the shoulders relaxed and down. Every time introverts, they feel nervous, they, they try to turtle in. And as Charles, Charles Darwin said, every time when we cannot perform as, as expected, we tend to turtle. Okay. So you will recognize that usually your female, female who is uh, a very introvert, usually she will put head like this. Okay, interesting. So every time you, know, you see that they're sitting bro, they're taking a lot of space, this is the extroverted people, and this is very easy hack for the introverts to learn and to adapt. Okay, and they need a lot of work. So ambiverts are the technically the most stable and balanced people, I think, in between. And extroverted people also are the extreme 
also, right? They're the loud and, you know? Well, the extroverts are, uh, extroverts are good for uh, new projects, adventures. When you, you have to uh, give all the new things to extroverts because they are, they are your rock. They will leverage these skills. So they're perfect for meeting new clients, boosting your network. Uh, this, they're, they're perfect. Okay. When they don't have enough social time, they shut down. All right, got you. And, but ambiverts on the other side, uh, they're great because they can uh, level up to extroversion and level down to introversion. Okay. But what, what is this advantage with ambiverts is that sometimes when the ambiverts is feeling more extroverted, they say yes to something. But when that day come in the future, they feel introverted. Okay. Then they have to be careful for what they are saying. Yes. What they are saying, yeah. Okay. Um, now, technically, in, in businesses and even in relationships, be it personal relationships, married, boyfriends, whatever it is, sometimes you won't or we can't be able to read people or read their body language or read their facial expressions or anything of the sort. And this can technically create certain problems on a later stage, be it in any format of a relationship, okay? Tell us a yes. bit about the terminology decoding people. How can we decode people and how it can help us, especially in our businesses, because we're talking business today. Yes, this is actually, this is uh, beside live detection, decoding people is my favorite topic. Okay, let's, let's because go. Because once you learn that, you everything is it's a game changer actually before we jump to that i would like to say whoever is going to be watching this that we're going to hold a workshop together hopefully early week august that we can cover all of this but we're just giving in a nutshell so go yes, ahead what's forward. decoding decoding uh, decoding people is the the most important two things that are helping you how to decode in any business relationship romantic relationship uh, between your friends or family in every area in your life if you know how to read micro messages and facial expression, it's a game changer. You will always understand what is behind the people's world, words. Okay. So uh, when we are talking about facial expression, I said in the beginning, this is one of the group of body language and we have seven facial expressions. But I want to show you a just slight difference how it looks like what people can learn in the nonverbal communication because they think they're good and they can pick up the signals, but actually we are overlooking sometimes. For example, usually people, when they are smiling, they will, uh, this is the easiest uh, trick to cover any negative or nervous emotion. But there is the difference between the smile when I smile like this and when the smile, when I'm pulling my muscles so up that I'm making this crow feet wrinkles like this. Okay. If you want to try at home how it looks like, try to bite your finger and you will see the muscles that are activating on the side. What is the real smile? That's if you don't have Botox and fillers, right? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> yes, there is an entire topic on that because uh, people are missing the clue because a lot of men and women, they're doing the Botox and uh, they're adjusting the... Uh, this part of the facial area, so it's very hard to read. That's why we have to know all the other micro messages, how to approach people to get, to convey our message that okay. we're sending to them. Also, a very, a very important thing to understand, let's say discuss. I said discuss, but you, you would say, why, why, why do we need that? Because you know, when something is disgusting or smelling or doesn't taste good, we usually tend to wrinkle our nose and to pull our uh, upper lip up like we want to close the nostrils mm. but how about in the company when somebody's saying so how do you like this idea for the new project and then you said oh it's okay this is the disgust you okay. can understand that pe what people are uh, feeling behind their emotion and this is important because no matter business or your private relationship, you can always pick up the signals. Okay. On the other side, there are micro messages that through entire your body movements, you can send. That's why it's very important to take body language for the, from the context. Uh, you will see in internet and in the books, they are saying that covering your hands, pulling your hands across your body, that this is a negative emotion. Mm. Actually, if you're sitting in the negotiation, and somebody is bringing some price which you don't like, you can cross your arms, lean back, 
turn your head, you know that I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. But if I'm just crossing my arms and still listening to you, I might be cold. And there is nothing wrong with that movement. But uh, is, Giovanna, sorry to interrupt, but don't you think this is also a very cultural thing? Because sometimes, you know, we Arabs also, we might take things personally, <laughs> especially if we come from different uh, nationalities. And yes. it happened many times, you know, and yes. you, you might not be doing it on purpose, but culturally people, you know, understand body language differently, right? For every, uh, every culture ha has a slight difference in the body language. Yeah. And every culture has a different emblems that they're using. Okay. So sign okay in uh, West doesn't mean same in the East. Okay. Uh, so there are slight differences, but there are universal body language in, in all cultures. For example, when you're, because they, they did the research, even mm. the blind athletes, mm. when they win a race, they tend to expand their body to put the hands very wide open, head held high. Okay. And they're, they're not afraid to claim the territory. Mm. When somebody loses the race, even the blind athletes that never saw anybody winning or losing, they tend to slouch, to cross their face like in shame. And this is something inner that we are born with. Okay. So there are universal, universal body language signs that they're applying all around the world, no matter what is our uh, cultural background. Okay, got you. Okay, in, in media, specifically in media and marketing, uh, since, you know, everyone today is marketing themselves in, in their fields, different fields. So we find marketeers, we find PR people, we find influencers, and we see doing it on, uh, them doing it online and doing it offline. Now, not everyone has PR skills. Not everyone is good with people, all right? And a lot of, of individuals, they do actually sell, sell themselves as PR personnel, but they don't have that personality. Yet, I still believe that they can be trained to become so. Nothing is impossible. So what do you advise this category, whoever wants to be a PR personnel in front of people today, what kind of body language postures they have to portray to others? Exactly. Uh, you said something very important, and this is that everybody can learn. Okay. This is the biggest idea because we are not uh, born just with confidence and charisma. We can learn how to be charismatic and how to look confident. Mm. And people who are working in PR, in marketing and meeting a lot of people, not only in this job, any job that is, uh, that, that is requiring meeting a lot of people, we have to know how to make first impression. Cool. And everybody's telling us, just go ahead and make first impression. And then you're like, how? This is why the body language is very important because it will build your nonverbal brand that you can portray the perfect first impression anywhere where you show up. Mm. And I just want to clarify that there are specific skills, what kind of message you want to send. Mm. And that means that every time you want to meet your client, you go to a network event and you say, I want to bring 10 more best clients tonight. Mm. I'm going to this meeting. I want to seal the deal. I want to bond more with my friends tonight. So every time you're going with a goal, mm. what you want from this meeting and your mm. first impression is happening, not when somebody meets you, it okay. happens when somebody sees you. Okay, and does this uh, also, um, is it affected also with your attire? What you wear, what colors you portray, things of the sort, or? Yes, it's all the, the all nonverbal signals that we are sending uh, is our age, colors, clothes, is the eye contact, smile, gestures, even the space, how, how, how much space we claim. They're all counting. So every time if you're doing the branding for your company, you're choosing the, you're choosing the color you're going to wear, it is portraying one message. Mm -hmm. And the more, the more you're aware of these uh, signals, the more you're in control. Mm -hmm. What kind of message you're sending and how to be purposeful. Okay. For example, if you're going to the networking event, you want to you want to know your clients better you want to use the social gazing we have three different types of eye contact okay what are they i'm interested they are power gazing they are social gazing and intimate gazing okay so if you are talking with your boss you want to ask them a raise or you want to talk to seal the deal in the business meeting you want to use the power gaze 
Mm. If you want to know your clients better or you're talking with your team, your colleagues, you want to do the social gazing. That's why sometimes people are so intimidating because people said eye contact is very important, just look person in the eyes. And it looks so awkward if somebody is looking at me 100% all the time in my eyes, I want to step back. Mm. The best, the best amount of eye contact is 80% and 20% it's just fine to look left, look right, look down, check your drink, your phone. It's just fine. Process the nonverbal signal somebody's sending to you. Oh uh, yeah. Because sometimes, you know, the sharp looks that you get from people, sometimes you feel these people are also trying to hit on you, you know, in yes. a way they are looking, <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to say it, but let's be honest. It happens. They are looking dirty at you. You know, so yes, this is where you, you need to read properly people, right? Exactly. If the, usually when somebody is uh, romantically interested in the, in the person, they tend to, uh, to drop their look from the eyes to down the, below this uh, <laughs> supernatural low. So uh, it's, uh, it's very... Uh, it doesn't differ very, from a man and a woman, right? I mean, it's the same. Uh, well, the... It differs from uh, one point that we are raised as a woman to look more social gazing. Okay. Always be good, be kind, smile, nod, and look, be, be friend with everyone. On the other side, men are raised to say, um, uh, I'm going to win this, fight for this, be strong, uh, be confident, and they're having more power gaze. Mm -hmm. So what happened in the business world? Women, are, uh, women uh, appear more softer because of giving too much social gazing. And on the other side, men become more aggressive because even with the colleague, they're using the power gazing. Okay. And when you're giving somebody 100% of the time eye contact and you don't let them to look left or right, you're, this, is the, uh, this is also like attacking them. Like this is my territory. And you're like, they're, they're like lure, luring you. It's uh, very aggressive that... Uh, that, that they sometimes before two men fight, they're looking each other 100% of the time, eye, eye to eye. I can't, yeah, eye to eye. Um, offline and online communication today really differs, yeah? So we find a lot of people, you know, portray themselves to others uh, in specific ways offline. So example, I meet Giovanna today. She gets to know Zena in a specific format. She likes Zena the way she is. And then suddenly after a week or, or two, she sees Zena online doing weird things, okay? Ut utilizing weird languages, utilizing weird body language, not the same person that she had seen uh, in person, okay? And we see this happening with a lot of business people, a lot of celebrities, a lot of even normal influencers or normal human beings. What, how important is it to portray the right body language online and how? How is it different from offline? When we're building nonverbal brand, it apply in both areas, professional and private. Mm. And the most important thing is that these two areas, they are not mixing, but they're linking. Okay. Because Complimenting. whatever you, media is a very strong tool. You can sell, you can reach everybody. Mm -hmm. And you're doing that, but influencing people, persuading people without even doing a purchase for something. So it's very important to know that whatever you are professionally putting in the media, if you want to become as a very serious, very professional businessman or woman, when they see the other part, if they get a chance to see the other part, and through social media, it's so easy nowadays to see what we are doing in our private life or what we are posting every day. Uh, it's very important to see that this professional person is also a reliable person. Okay. This confident person in, uh, that, appear in, that appear confident is also somebody who is confident with the friends or teaching their child to be confident. Or mm -hmm. uh, it has to have some similarity because if they, it doesn't have similarity, as the buyers, as the audience, we don't trust. So is it, is it normal example? Let's take me as an example. If I portray myself as a business lady and at the same time with my friends, I'm different. Even online, having my own page, okay? It also portrays my life, okay? Uh, 
So is it important for me to maintain that seriousness or I can also be flexible by showcasing, you know, my life, but also in a moderate way? 100%, yes. Okay, so it's if okay. You're, uh, of course, that you want to, uh, as we said, same like with the uh, eye gazing, it's same with your body language uh, movement, with your confidence, your first impression. This is what goal you want to reach. In the professional way, you want to reach more serious, more power, more confidence. Mm -hmm. In With your friends and family, you want to be more warm, more smiling, more open. Doesn't, doesn't mean that you're not still confident and that you don't have first impression. But somehow these two areas are seen as somebody who is professional, but also reliable. Okay. It okay. has to match. It has to match. If it doesn't match, people are losing the loyalty and trust. Yeah, because there's a lot of people that I know who own companies and then they like to like showcase their cars and the, on their social media and they, they talk nonsense and stuff like that. So you start technically indirectly losing interest in these people. So you stop following them and you don't look at them with respect anymore when you see them in person. So I think those categories of people really do require a format of training. 100%, exactly. you know, on how to portray themselves online and offline. Now, when it comes to media and sales training, since we do this, and we work with a lot of individuals on training them to be in media, because, you know, it's very difficult for a lot of people to be able to be normal on TV, be normal on radio, and be normal with press, yes. because they feel a bit kind of nervous or agitated uh, in certain ways. Give us some techniques. Uh, in, that we can use in media trainings, which we can do together, of course, in our workshop, which is upcoming, and hopefully in, in any formats with clients. And how do you assess someone that needs training? How do you feel that this person requires training? Yes. So uh, when we, as we said, that when we are uh, improving our people skills, we are building our nonverbal brand that we portray everywhere, in person, on media, our profile photo, on the phone, in all these different channels, we are portraying our brand. That's okay. why it's so important for persons who are in the media to have this training, to understand that they are in control and that they can send purposeful message. Okay. Depends what kind of message they want to convey. So uh, no matter what kind of job it is, what is your brand, what you're selling, is it, uh, is it your personal branding or you're uh, doing something completely different, one thing is always common. People want to see trust in you. Mm -hmm. And you can show the trust with your nonverbal communication. If you ever watch TED Talks, yes. the science, yes, science of People School did a research why some views has uh, why some videos has a million of views and why others have way less. They are similar topic, same time they posted, they were searching for a pattern. They were searching for the clothes, hands, smile, gestures, movement on the stage, and uh, even the gender. They found that one pattern differ completely these two videos. Okay. The most viewed videos speakers were using 465 hand gestures wow. while, while the least viewed videos they were using 272 hand gestures mm -hmm. this is almost double s and the body language training is giving you perfect example and ideas how you can use your hand gestures to emphasize ideas to explain them to make a point to use them purposeful the best role models are presidents I love their speech. I love their uh, how they're by time they are improving. Uh, you will see how some of them at the beginning they were pointing fingers. Now they close these fingers like this. Yeah. So this is. I think the best person in that is Bill Clinton, from from uh, yeah. body language perspective and and uh, public speaking. But again, I have another question: How can a person, let's say on stage or maybe on TV? do actually pay attention to his hands while talking and at the same time registering what he has to say. Because again, utilizing the hands and talking at the same time and paying attention to your facial, it requires time of experience, right? Yes, it takes, it takes a training and uh, to be consistent. For example, if I'm telling you, if I'm talking with you and all the time my hands are behind my back, in your brain, I'm trigger, triggering alarm for fear. Mm. You're constantly thinking, what's behind the back? 
Am I holding something? You don't trust me. The moment you see my hands, that's why I'm always make sure that even when we are talking, I'm saying hi, here I am, because you cannot see from the screen my hands. You, you should know what is the zone where you should hold your hands because too many hand gestures are too aggressive. Okay. Very less is very, very close, very stiff, very cold. And there are also uh, the things that uh, you can use. There are some techniques. Uh, there is entire training for this, but let me give you an example. If I'm telling, uh, if I'm telling you, Zaina, we have a small problem. <laughs> You're saying, but this is not small. Yeah. Or if I'm telling you, we're gonna make a big change. Well, this is not that big. So you're, you're already picking up that something is incongruent. This is why the training is important that whatever you're saying, you don't have to emphasize every word, but what is important, the, your idea and the words that are important, how to convey the message, you can use your hands. And if, someone is, is, and if someone is like uh, sitting in front of you and they become aggressive, so is it always given um, you know, an advice to the person to actually calm down and just try to receive and then react? Yes, uh, uh, well, it's about uh, being aggressive in the body language movements. You, uh, th this is usually happening, especially between the different cultures. Some cultures are more aggressive, having more hand gestures, while on the other side, some of them, they're very stiff. You should always dial up your hand gestures to meet, to meet the... the no, the I'm, I'm, saying, I'm saying sometimes in meetings, when, when we, you know, in business meetings, sometimes you'll find the other person, after a lot of discussions, he starts, he or she becomes they, uh, agitated, they become more aggressive, and then you go like, whoa, what happened? You know, the, this whole shift. Yes. So this uh, is where the friction starts. So where do you, how do you stop and how do you chill the place first for everyone to, you know, calm down? Yes. Actually, it's very important, uh, uh, the micro messages that can be micro positive and micro negative. Micro negatives are not uh, worst or bad, bad yeah. body movements. They're just helping us that when person, if it's aggressive toward us, we can use these micro negatives to send the message that to stop. Okay. There are also techniques how to exit conversation, how to make people stop where they are. If they cross the line, there is also the, if we don't, we cannot choose the right words or we don't know how to react because usually they surprise us. True. But if we know how to set ourselves, there are also tricks how to exit every conversation, how make somebody stop talking and also how to show somebody that you are not happy, whatever they just brought at the table. Okay, interesting. It's, um, and yeah, go, go ahead. Yeah, the, the biggest idea of the uh, nonverbal communication is that where the more you know the, to read, to pick up the signals, you will, uh, you can in advance see what is coming. Oh, wow, interesting, very nice. Okay, um, and Giovanna, one more thing. What is it, what's the advice um, that you would like to give any individual today? Uh, as I mentioned, we will be doing a workshop, but I think it will be more business related, not uh, intimacy or relationships related because they can go back to you on that. What is, what is the one advice that you would like to give any woman or a woman in power in a position? The first thing that they have to ignore and the first thing that they have to consider. Uh, not only the people who are in the power, I would give this advice to everybody because it can apply to everybody that the biggest idea they can have is they are talented for nonverbal okay. communication. They, once they discover this talent, they, they can win the business, seal the deal, and they can achieve any goal they want. What I would give as advice, which is uh, always to use the nonverbal for good, and always I try always to help others to improve their own people skills, is that uh, usually when people are thinking about improving on themselves, they're thinking about their technical skills. Okay. But actually, the people skills are where they're bringing them on the top. Okay. And. Even the research find out that people who are developing their people skills earn $29,000 per year more. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> this is, amazing. Yes, this is very uh, interesting thing because I'm sure that everybody who is listening now have at least one example that the graduate diploma was not the relevant to their success. That's very some true. People, some people's score in the school doesn't lead them. That's why it's very important. And my wish that one day this will be more than a few lessons in the school uh, about emotional intelligence, social skills, and interpersonal skills. Uh, this is what they have to, uh, this is the thing that they have to know so they can assess easier and to work on themselves. And the second thing, I want to uh, bury the meat that nobody is born confident True. and nobody is born charismatic. True. <laughs> and really? that's why I, I wish that everybody can see uh, why I said presidential speech, because these people are trained from the body language specialists. They have a lot of trainings like this. And even we are not sometimes satisfied with the result, the people somehow pick up this nonverbal signal and they know how to send the message and to make people trust them. They're perfect, perfect example of how confidence and charisma can can be built, can okay. be learned. So anyone can always... so anyone can develop a charisma and confidence. Exactly. And there is the formula how to be confident and how to be charismatic. So uh, it's not uh, it's just a myth like you just have it or you don't have it. No, there, you, there is exact, exactly step by step how to learn and how to develop. Everybody can appear confident and charismatic. And what, what is more, the most important thing, I don't want anybody to change themselves. I want you and everybody to be who you are. Yeah. But the more you're practicing your nonverbal skills, you're just leverage your own personal branding exactly. it's like uh, your nonverbal brand you you have some skills that you might develop a little bit more some some already skills you have you just need to know uh, what is your comfort zone and how to be confident likable memorable in your comfort zone very true Giovanna, thank you so much. Okay, this is in a nutshell. Uh, uh, it's going to be a very interesting podcast, but um, I'm also excited to have a very interesting personal branding workshop with you uh, to also teach um, specific people in, in the business industry how to uh, you know, portray uh, a very professional and very mature body language online and offline, which we're going to announce about it soon. And anyone who wants to have a training with you uh, be it on any level, can actually get in touch with you because I'm going to have your uh, details on uh, the actual video. Uh, Giovanna, thank you so much for your time. And I look thank forward so uh, again for another session, hopefully together. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much for having me. Thank Thanks you. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.